On day one, I entered the ruins of the Mega Pizza Plex as a security guard. I was tasked with a rescue mission to find a lost child. Gregory, where are you? Just then, the world around me distorted into a virtual reality, and a haunting bunny creature appeared before me. Foolish human, I, the entity, will trap you here just like the others before you. Before I could respond, ruined Glamrock Freddy crawled up from behind out of nowhere and attacked me. Between him and the entity, I got beaten down hit by hit. I was totally defenseless to their incredible power. I gotta get out of here. I made a run for it and the two foes followed after me. I couldn't let myself get captured. If I did, I would surely die. As I ran, the degraded ground of the old pizza plex gave into my weight. The floor crumbled beneath my feet and I plummeted into the darkness below. On day two, I woke up inside the depths of the Mega Pizza Plex. The fall had left me with low health, but I somehow managed to survive. Suddenly, I heard the sound of metallic footsteps approaching me. I quickly searched for cover and hid from the incoming threat. To my horror, I saw that Glamrock Freddy was still searching for my whereabouts. How is he still alive? I didn't think things could get worse until the world distorted once again. The entity appeared next to me. Gotcha. Freddy turned his sights onto me and charged forward. I was sandwiched between him and the entity with nowhere to go. As they closed in, I thought fast and jumped out of the way at the last second. The entity tried swiping at me, but instead attacked Freddy, accidentally killing his own puppet. No, I'll make you pay for that. Unfortunately for me, now the entity was enraged. I ran away. On day three, the entity was pursuing me through the Mega Pizza Plex in search of revenge. I tried to outspeed him, but the entity teleported in front of me around each twist and turn I made. It was as if he could predict my every move. At this rate, I'm done for. Just then, I heard the sound of a cute voice calling out to me. Catch! Out of nowhere, a little bear animatronic tossed over the scraps of the destroyed Glamrock Freddy. I picked it up and underwent a transformation. My body fused with the part, granting me Freddy's head and his powerful hands. I now had 15 hearts, more armor, and a mic stand. No more running! With my new upgrade, I tried to fight back against the power of the virtual rabbit. The entity slammed out of its hands, sending sparks of electricity flying everywhere. I knew I had to avoid those fists at all costs. It looked like it would only take a few solid blows to really hurt me. I used my new mic stand to clobber the entity over and over. My new animatronic hand strengthened my blows, but the entity was too big and powerful for it to do any harm. He retaliated with bursts of sparks, frying the circuits in my upgraded form. Soon, he was able to push me back, gaining ground inch by inch. I used everything I could to defeat him, but it was no use. I couldn't match even a fraction of the entity's power. He's too strong. Follow me. I quickly took my chance and followed behind the little bear. Staff boss, after him. On days four through five, I followed behind the bear animatronic in an attempt to escape the entity's attack. Who are you? I'm Helpy. I'm here to assist fast bear employees like you. We gotta keep moving. Let's go. The two of us then turned a corner and were ambushed by a horde of staff bots. Ah! I braced myself for battle and began to smash through the horde. The strength of the Glamrock Freddy suit was much greater than I gave it credit for. Each slam attack blasted into them with the force of a hydraulic press. Not to mention, the Glamrock Freddy suit could really take a beating. But there were so many, and my attacks were slow compared to the onslaught of the staff bots. True to his name, Helpy used his tiny body to bob and weave through the horde and knock them off their wheels with a dive attack. Thanks to the Glamrock Freddy upgrade, I was able to smash my way through a few of them, but more and more kept coming. They were slowing me down, and the entity was going to catch up. Out of my way! I pushed through the horde and continued running with Helpy until we were met with a dead end. Over here! Helpy and I jumped into a nearby vent and found a room to hide in. We held our breaths as the entity teleported into the vents. He combed through the area, searching for any sign of us. You can't hide from me. The world reverted to normal and the entity vanished. However, what remained in his place was ruined Monty Gator. Ah! The monster spotted me, so Helpy and I ran deeper into the vents and the destroyed gator crawled after us. On days six through seven, Helpy and I ran through the vents as Monty clawed his way after us. The vents twisted and turned like a maze. I had no idea where I was headed, but I knew that the zombified gator was following our every move. I made a wrong turn and Monty jump scared us. Ah, not this way! I turned back and kept moving until Helpy and I were met with a fork in the vent. I'll go left, 
You take the right. I did as I was told and went down the second path. To my horror, I was met with nothing but a dead end. I looked around to find a small vent room with a strange bunny mask. What is this? There you are. I turned around and realized Monty was right behind me. I was trapped. On days eight through nine, I was about to be killed by Monty. I had to do something quick, so I put on the bunny mask I found. Suddenly, the world shifted into AR and revealed the dead end was now opened as a new pathway for me to traverse. This mask lets me manipulate dimensions like the entity. I took my chance and continued down the vent to escape Monty. Unfortunately, as I ran, I misstepped and fell into a hole in the vent. I plummeted from the ceiling and landed inside Monty Golf. Luckily, the water inside broke my fall, saving me from fall damage. I removed my mask and the world shifted back to normal. This will definitely come in handy. Help! Is anyone there? This is Gregory! Gregory? That's the kid I need to save! He sounded like he was in trouble, so I hurried after the source of the distress call. On days 10 through 11, I arrived at the source of the sound to find that it was coming from a Roxy Talkie. Gregory? This is Max. I'm here to help. Behind you! I turned around and realized that Monty was headed straight towards me. He had followed me here. I quickly snagged the Roxy Talkie and began to run. I knew that if I was captured by Monty now, I would be killed. I jumped through the different locations of Monty Golf until I was cornered by a massive area full of water. I'm gonna have to jump through this one. I began to platform over the floating debris across the gap. However, Monty jumped into the water after me. He circled me in the water as I jumped from obstacle to obstacle. I knew that one wrong move and I would be gator food. He hopped out, snapping at me with his razor sharp teeth, but I managed to avoid his attack and kept moving forward. Finally, I reached the other side of the water and scaled up a ladder until I was on top of the grates over Monty Golf. As I ran, I heard the vines shuffling nearby. Is that freak able to climb? Out of nowhere, Monty fell from the ceiling and landed in front of me. Nowhere to run now. On days 12 through 14, I was face to face with the ruined Monty Gator. I knew that I couldn't run any longer. If I can't escape, then I have to fight. Monty lunged at me with his crushing teeth and I braced myself. I retaliated with a mechanical left hook to his jaw. Monty used that opportunity to leap on top of me and start ripping and tearing at my body with his mechanical jaws. Ah, get off! Get off! Get off! I wedged the mic stand between myself and the gator and pried him off. For not having any legs, the gator sure was fast. He used his stubby, mechanical limbs to close the distance for an awful bite attack. I beat him back with my microphone stand repeatedly, but he was totally relentless. Even with my Freddy upgrade, the gator's razor-sharp claws were too much for me to endure. I was gonna have to think of a plan B and fast. Just then, I spotted a weak point in the grate, giving me an idea. Hey, Monty, follow me! I made a run for the gap and jumped over the hole as Monty followed after. I threw my mic stand into the grate, causing the ground to crumble. The weak point broke and Monty fell through and smashed into the ground below. Is he dead? I have to make sure. I jumped into the water below and approached the gator with caution. I reached out to touch him and suddenly underwent another transformation. Our bodies fused and I gained Monty's powerful claws. My teeth sharpened, I grew taller, and sprouted a green scaly tail. I was now empowered with the strength of Monty and had 20 hearts. This is amazing! I took out my Roxy Talkie to see if Gregory was okay. I defeated Monty. Where are you? I'm in the sinkhole at the center of the pizza plex. Please help me! Just then, the lights began flickering and suddenly turned off completely, shrouding the golf course in darkness. It's past your bedtime. Before I could respond, something ambushed me, knocking me out cold. On days 15 to 17, I woke up inside the daycare. The bright and colorful room around me felt oddly disorienting. Before I could fully grasp my surroundings, a sudden, unexpected jump scare from the daycare attendant startled me. I instinctively jumped in surprise. My heart was racing. Please! He's going to take over! What do you mean? Please find the fast wrench and reset me before it's too late! The room plunged into darkness as the lights went off. My heart pounded even harder as the daycare attendant, who was seemingly harmless before, started behaving strangely. His movements became erratic, and he suddenly turned towards me with aggressive intent. The sun is down now. It's time for the moon to attack. Before I could react, Moon lunged at me. Instinct took over, and I found myself engaged in a fierce struggle. The two-faced daycare attendant was incredibly fast, attacking with extreme precision and agility. Moon's agility allowed him to dodge most of my attacks. My frustration mounted as my strikes missed their mark, and the situation became increasingly dire. He darted around the daycare, jumping around every corner in pitch black darkness to jump scare me over and over, doing damage and running away maniacally. Hey, what happened to the friendly son I was just speaking to? The sun 
and isn't here at the moment. Please leave a message. A heavy blow landed squarely, knocking me back and leaving me with low health. Pain pulsed through my body as I struggled to regain my footing. It became clear that facing Moon head on was not a winning strategy, especially with my health so depleted. I quickly assessed my surroundings, spotting an opening to make my escape. Adrenaline surged through my veins as I turned and bolted towards the nearest exit. Moon's taunts and threats echoed behind me as I pushed myself to run faster. On days 18 to 20, I had no choice but to stealth my way through the kids' playground. I carefully moved from playset to playset, trying to keep out of sight. However, my large size made it challenging to stay hidden, especially when I reached the jungle gym. I realized that squeezing into it was not an option. Shoot, I need another way out. As I was strategizing my next move, my heart raced when I spotted the moon nearby. I managed to narrowly escape his line of sight, my heart pounding as I moved with calculated steps, building tension with each passing moment. Then, as I scanned the area, relief washed over me as I spotted the Faz Wrench atop one of the jungle gyms. How am I supposed to get up there? Inspiration struck when I remembered the Vanny Mask. Putting it on, I saw a new perspective. The jungle gym structure seemed to transform, revealing a stair-like pathway that I could ascend. I wasted no time, running up the makeshift stairs towards the device, and I grabbed the Faz Wrench. As I was removing my mask, Moon suddenly ambushed me. Found you. I activated the device just in the nick of time, and as the light enveloped Moon, his tone shifted and reset into Eclipse, a new personality that appeared to be even more powerful. Oh no! You're not supposed to be here yet! Come with me, little one! Eclipse guided me to a slide nearby. His grip firm as he pushed me down it. Ah! On days 21 to 23, after the unexpected slide journey, I landed on the other end of the slide, finding myself inside of a place called Phaser Blast. What's Phaser Blast? Just then, my Roxy Talkie buzzed to life, and Gregory's voice came through urgently. You're in the Pizza Plex's laser arcade. If you want any hope of surviving here, you need to get your hands on the Golden Phaser Blaster. Roger, roger. No sooner had the word sunk in than I was suddenly ambushed by a swarm of staff bots. The situation escalated quickly, and I found myself in a battle against the onslaught. I fought back valiantly, taking down quite a few of the bots, but their numbers seemed endless, and they overwhelmed me with their phaser blasters. Realizing that direct confrontation was becoming increasingly perilous, I decided to change tactics. I sprinted through the maze-like corridors of phaser blast, using obstacles and structures as cover to evade the relentless barrage of blasts from the staff bots. I gained some distance and hunkered down, trying to remain unseen. Their buzzing movements signaled their search for me continued. I need to find that golden phaser blaster Gregory mentioned. Looking around, I spotted a glowing room at the top. I have a feeling that's where I need to go. On days 24 to 26, I stealthed through the maze of Phaser Blast. As I continued my ascent towards the glowing room that held the promise of the Golden Phaser Blaster, I suddenly encountered a pile of boxes and obstacles blocking my path. However, despite my best efforts, one of the bots managed to catch sight of me. Reacting swiftly, I neutralized it before it could alert the others. My movement's efficient and lethal. Looks like I'll need to carve out another path. Oh wait, I have an idea. I remembered the Vanny Mask and its transformative abilities. Slipping it on, I watched as the obstacles before me cleared away, creating a passage. Stepping through, I intended to remove the mask, but to my alarm, it seemed to cling to my face, refusing to come off. What's going on? A chilling presence materialized as the entity appeared before me. Its eerie form seemed to flicker between dimensions. I have you right where I want you. In an instant, staff bots manifested all around me, their sensors locking onto my position. My cover was blown, and escape seemed increasingly unlikely. The situation had escalated far beyond my control. Realizing that running was my only option, I bolted from the spot, my heart pounding as I raced through the corridors. On days 27 through 29, I was being pursued relentlessly by the swarm of staff bots. My heart raced as I sprinted through the corridors of Phaser Blast, my footsteps echoing in the tense silence. My goal was the prize room, where the Golden Phaser Blaster awaited. I know there has to be a way over there! At last, I burst into the prize room, and there it was, gleaming before me. The Golden Phaser Blaster. I'll be taking this. I quickly snatched it up and figured out how to use it. With the Golden Phaser Blaster in hand, I went out to face the horde of staff bots that had pursued me. Without hesitation, I opened fire, the blaster's energy beams tearing through the air with a blazing intensity. The bots fell one by one, the weapon strength proving to be an unstoppable force against them. <laughs> Take that, suckers! Amid the chaos of the battle, a sudden shift in the air signaled the entity's arrival. Its chilling presence materialized behind me. You're not escaping! 
me! In a split second, I mustered all my willpower and forcefully ripped the Vanny Mask from my face just before the entity could reach me. It vanished, leaving me both relieved and weary of its return. I'm only vulnerable to the entity when the world changes to AR. I better be careful using this mask. Just as the tension began to ease, my Roxy Talkie sprang to life unexpectedly. Someone's coming! Hide! On days 30 to 32, I quickly ran into another room looking for cover as a strange looking rock star fox followed me in. Intruder! Show yourself! Who's that? That's Roxy. She'll tear you to shreds. Good news is that she's blind, so use that to your advantage. Copy that. With stealth as my ally, I moved silently around the room while Roxy continued to look for me. I kept in mind her blindness, carefully navigating the environment and avoiding her notice. The tension was palpable as I ghosted to the room, aware that any misstep could lead to dire consequences. Spotting a maintenance vent passageway, I seized the opportunity and slipped inside, my heart racing. As I started heading through the narrow ducts, my focus was entirely on the path ahead. However, my concentration was shattered when Music Man suddenly materialized out of nowhere, startling me with his presence. Ah! I heard that. I wasted no time and swiftly neutralized the mini Music Man that had appeared, then took off running. The sound of Roxy's pursuit reverberated through the vents, her determined footsteps closing in on me. Adrenaline surged through my veins as I pushed myself to the limits, my breaths coming in short gasps as I raced to outpace Roxy's relentless chase. On days 33 through 35, I emerged from the vent and found myself in a new area called Roxy Raceway. The atmosphere was charged with urgency as I realized that Roxy was still hot on my tail. Get back here! You can't outrun me! I raced through the piles of rubble trying to lose Roxy. I managed to scramble up on top of the track thinking I had finally lost her. Suddenly, she jumped up in front of me. I fled down the track and jumped over the edge to throw her off. Unfortunately, she was still behind me and was gaining on me. I need to make a diversion. I ran into the raceway party room and suddenly I was hit with a great sense of deja vu. Why do I feel like I've been here before? I didn't have time to dwell on it, so I turned on a jukebox and stood back. Roxy rushed into the room and attacked the record player instead of me. What? Where are you? That was my chance. While Roxy was dazed and confused, I ran in for a surprise attack. On days 36 to 38, I landed a heavy blow on Roxy, expecting it to be a decisive strike. However, her durability was greater than I anticipated, and she survived the hit. There you are. You'll pay for that. The fight intensified as we clashed, Roxy proving to be a formidable opponent even after the surprise attack. She robotically lurched at me, biting down at me with her metal jaws. I fought back with Monty's claws as best as I could. Our fight spilled out of the party room as I tried to get some distance to use my mic stand. Roxy chased me, screaming powerful roar attacks. I shot back with my laser, stunning her with its rapid fire. We clashed and roamed around the rubble as we fought. Roxy's attacks were relentless, and eventually I was pushed back on top of the racetracks. I tried to outmaneuver her up there, but she sent out an electrified punch using her exposed wire. The fight was going poorly, but luckily I found some stale pizza to help regain my hearts. With renewed vigor, we clashed once more under the raceway. Laser blasts and powerful roars shot through the air, the sound of our struggle echoing in the large room. Despite my efforts, she managed to knock me down to half a heart, leaving me on the brink of defeat. Please, I don't want to die! Just then, Roxy stopped attacking me. Max, is that you? Just then, my Roxy talkie buzzed to life. Finish her, now! Seizing the moment, I took my chance and landed the final blow. Roxy fell to the ground, lifeless. A strange mix of emotions swept over me as I looked at her motionless form. That didn't feel right. She was going to kill you. Take her scraps as an upgrade. I followed his advice, claiming the hard-fought upgrade. However, as I did so, an unexpected sensation washed over me. Suddenly, I was engulfed in a flashback, transporting me to a different time and place. On days 39 through 41, my vision came into focus. I was a little kid at a birthday party in the Megaplex, and I was all alone. What the? Is this a memory? Happy birthday! I jumped as I saw a brand new looking Roxy coming out to greet me. I hope you're having a super special day. Here, I have a present for you. She placed a cake down on the table, and it looked delicious. Wow, thanks, Roxy. This is the best birthday ever. You'll always be my superstar, Max. With that, my memory began to fade, and I snapped back to reality. I remember now. I'm so sorry, Roxy. I'll use your parts to save Gregory and make you proud. I absorbed Roxy's parts and transformed into my next form. I gained five more hearts and bite power. This reminds me of 87. 
Just then, I spotted a cute little figure running by. Help me? Is that you? He didn't stop, so I chased after him. On days 42 through 44, I chased after Helpy and then lost him in the storage rooms of the pizza plex. I looked around and realized I was surrounded by a ton of decommissioned endoskeletons. I continued to the room until I spotted Helpy in the corner. Uh, Helpy? Ah! Oh no! You shouldn't be here! Suddenly, the world shifted into AR again and Helpy ran away. Wait! Come back! I turned to face him, but I came face to face with all of the endoskeletons. They had all moved around me and were waiting to strike. Ah! I was cornered in the back of the storage rooms, and they all closed in on me. On days 45 through 47, I was trying to fight my way through all the endoskeletons. They may have been skeletons, but they were tougher than the staff bots, even with my upgrade from Roxy. I was swamped from every direction. Rusty metal stirred as bear claws slashed at me. Like zombies, the endoskeletons lurched and tried to subdue me. I ran around the horde, taking some down with my mic stand and mighty claws, but it wasn't enough. The endoskeletons showed no signs of pain or fatigue. I bit back furiously at the crowd, tearing some to shreds, but as each one fell, more skeletons took its place. Finally, I tried my phaser blaster and managed to start bringing down their numbers in mass. Unfortunately, I had still lost too much health. I held on and fought with everything I had. Eventually, I was able to fight my way out and knock them back long enough to make my escape. I found a space to hide in the hallways. After a while, I thought the coast was clear, but the bots were stubborn and they scoured the place for any sign of me. I gotta get out of here. I did my best to sneak around the back halls of the pizza plex until I got away from them. I thought I had escaped until suddenly my Roxy Talkie turned on. Max, how's it going? No, 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 no. Before I could switch it off, the endoskeleton spotted me. Bad time, Gregory! On days 48 through 50, I was being chased around the back halls of the pizza plex by a horde of endoskeletons. I attempted to shake them off, but every twist and turn I made just revealed even more that were waiting for me and would join the chase. The more I ran, the more my stamina dwindled, causing me to slow down. Meanwhile, the endoskeletons were able to keep up, maintaining their same speed. They were getting closer and closer to catching me. They even got close enough to where they were able to smack me down to low health. Ah! These guys aren't messing around! I knew I couldn't keep this up and outrun them for much longer, so I ducked into a nearby room. But to my surprise, the room was a dead end. I was cornered, and the endoskeletons would be there any second. Where do I go? Suddenly, a doorway opened. Max, over here! It was Helpy, and he had revealed a secret way for me to escape behind the wall. Come with me, before they get you! I followed him behind the wall, and just before the endoskeletons could catch me, the entrance closed behind us with not a second to spare. On days 51 through 53, I arrived on the other side of the doorway with Helpy, and suddenly the world shifted back to normal. What the heck happened back there? It was a trap set up by the entity. He's trying to kill you. What's this entity guy's deal? And why would he want to kill me? Nobody escapes the Mega Pizza Plex. The entity makes sure of that. Before I can ask any more questions, my Roxy Talkie suddenly sprung to life. Max, are you okay? Sorry about all that trouble back there. It's all right, but things are getting pretty hairy here on my end. If you want to survive the entity's attacks, you're going to need more parts. Chica's probably walking around the kitchen. You should head over there and get that next upgrade. You're probably right. Well then, I better hurry before the entity strikes again. With no other leads, I decided to follow Gregory's instructions and left for the kitchen, leaving Helpy behind. On days 54 through 56, I arrived at the kitchen. There, I saw Chica in the corner. Luckily, she didn't see me. She was too busy chewing on some who knows how old pizza. She seems distracted. Now's my chance. I snuck over to her as quietly as I could. Without making a sound, I crept up as close behind her as possible while still avoiding detection. When I had gotten as close as I could, I hit her from behind as hard as I could. Rah! I thought a blow that hard would have knocked her out for sure, but my plan backfired. Surprise! She started attacking me back. The two of us struggled back and forth for a while, but we were evenly matched and it was anyone's game. With her deadly claws, Chica slashed and hacked at every inch of me she could reach. I did my best to retaliate with my mighty bites. I was lucky that she was missing her beak or she could have bit me right back. As we struggled against each other's powers, we moved across the length of the kitchen, trying to gain the upper hand. Just as I managed to land a hit with my mic stand, she shrieked a horrible song, sending me into a blind confusion. The moment I had my guard down, to my horror, Chica began to vomit up a horrible green acid that melted my armor and ate right through my health. 
I lunged at her with my superior strength, but in the ruckus, we both lost our footing and fell right into the trash compactor. On days 57 through 59, I crash landed at the bottom of the trash chute. My whole body was aching. I only had half a heart remaining. Ugh. Wow, I managed to survive the fall? At least I'm out of danger now. With a mechanical whirring, suddenly Chica pulled herself up from behind the waist. She immediately began to stumble towards me, looking to finish what she had started earlier. You aren't getting away that easily. Oh, come on. Can't I catch a break? I immediately booked it as fast as I could through the trash, stumbling over garbage as I went. There was no way I could take on Chica with so low of health. I need to find something to heal with, quick. Chica rushed at me from behind. The fall seemed to not have affected her at all. Get back here. She attacked me wildly as we ran, each attack getting closer and closer to me. I'm sorry, but I think I just need some space. In a last ditch effort, I fired wildly with my phaser blaster, hitting her in the head and stunning her. As I put some distance between me and the killer animatronic, the trash opened up into a large area. The smell was unbearable, but fortunately for me, I saw a pizza on the floor. Ew! I guess beggars can't be choosers. I wasted no time dashing forward and snatching the snack up. I pinched my nose and gobbled the rotting food up as fast as I could. I breathed a sigh of relief as my heart slowly began to refill, but that didn't last long as Chica once again caught up to me. There you are. On days 60 through 62, Chica once again charged me to attack. With my hearts now filled back up, I charged right back at her. I let loose a flurry of attacks as Chica rushed towards me. She was very fast, and after I missed a few bites, I switched strategies and threw my mic stand. It connected, but Chica shot acid and poison at me. I dodged as well as I could and then unleashed a few phaser shots before rushing in again. As the slugfest went on, I realized how tough Chica really was. It definitely didn't help when she used her voice box and kept blinding me, making her even harder to hit. I couldn't see through the darkness. Every time Chica blasted me, she faded in and out of the shadows, attacking me from every direction. I had to endure the fight, taking blow after blow. I fought back furiously, using every power I had at my disposal before finally going into a rage and fighting furiously over and over again. Despite how tough Chica was, I knew I couldn't give up here. With all of my abilities, I wore her down and finally defeated her with one last big hit. As she died, she dropped a piece of machinery on the trash-covered floor. I quickly snatched it up, ready for a much needed upgrade. Right as I did, I transformed once again. I became more glamorous, and my mouth became hardened like a beak. Additionally, I gained five hearts and Chica's voice box attack. Wow, nice! This'll definitely come in handy. But for now, I'm still stuck in this trash chute. I looked around the room when I heard a faint sound in the distance. As I listened closer, I realized music was playing from another room nearby. That might be the way out of here. Not wanting to stay in the smelly trash room any longer, Longer, I quickly ran off to investigate the strange music. On days 63 through 66, I finally escaped the trash and arrived at the West Arcade of the Mega Pizza Plex. On the other side of the large room was the source of the music. The massive DJ Music Man was rocking out on top of a stage covered in rubble. Hey, who's ready to rock? Whoa, that guy is huge and loud. I don't think it would do any good to get on his bad side. Entering stealth mode. I began sneaking around the West Arcade trying to avoid being spotted. Fortunately for me, there was tons of rubble to hide behind. As I was almost done sneaking by the giant spider DJ, a little Music Man spider fell down from the ceiling right in front of my face. Ah, jump scare! I reflexively swatted the little guy away. He wasn't tough at all and was destroyed with that single hit. But unfortunately, it had already blown my cover because I made too much noise. The music suddenly ground to a halt as the massive DJ Music Man turned right towards me. No! I'm going to rock you to death! The giant robot rushed right at me, climbing over the rubble way too quick. I ran as fast as I could, not wanting to fight this giant monster. As I was chased around the arcade, no matter where I went, the DJ Music Man would always cut me off, popping out of various holes and cracks in the walls and floor. Despite his size, I couldn't get away at all. What is this? Whack-a-mole? I have to do something risky if I'm going to escape this one. Not hesitating, I jumped into one of the various holes myself. On days 67 through 70, I arrived on the other side of the hole to discover a spider nest surrounded by holes in the walls that led in all different directions. Huh, is this where the DJ Music Man sleeps? Things were quiet, so I started investigating around the room to see if it held anything useful. Suddenly, a huge swarm of mini music men poured out of the holes in the walls, ready to kill me. Despite being taken by surprise, I was swift to action, unleashing a wave of booming audio from my voice box which scattered their forces and sent them flying in all directions. Seizing the opportunity, I lunged forward with a powerful bite attack, managing to take out some of the enemies before they could regroup. 
but the damage wasn't enough. I locked on and fired a targeted laser blast, which was able to quickly take out each foe in one hit, swiftly thinning out their ranks. Just as I thought I'd finished off the Music Man, even more popped out of nowhere, emerging from every crevice with an unwavering determination. As the swarm closed in on me, my abilities couldn't take them out quick enough. I had no choice but to retreat. I jumped from block to block and maneuvered away from the enemies, but it was no use. The floor was covered in sticky cobwebs which slowed me down enough for the Music Man to catch up once more. Despite the odds, I refused to give up. Summoning the last reserves of my strength, I targeted the stragglers with another focused attack from my phaser gun. I was strong enough to blast through them left and right, but more and more just kept coming. Despite this, I was eventually able to thin their horde and take them all out. When I killed the last one, it dropped the Music Man plush that gave me two extra hearts. Hey! Awesome! I wanted to get out of there before anyone else showed up, but just as I was leaving, I was stopped by DJ Music Man himself. You've terrorized my spiders long enough, you monster! What? They attacked me first! You're going down! On days 71 through 74, I was locked in battle with the massive spider DJ Music Man. We charged and at each other, teeth bared. Our bites met in a flurry of fur and flesh that was evenly matched. But I had another close range ability at my disposal, my claws. I raked them across him, leaving deep gashes into his skin. With the powerful smack of one of the DJ Music Man's fists, I was sent flying back and got restrained within the sticky confines of the webbing. As he came rushing towards me, I fired at him from a distance, unloading my phaser blaster rapidly at the gargantuan foe. But the enemy was crafty and able to easily traverse the webline battleground, climbing up the walls and disappearing into the holes throughout the room. He battered me around, appearing from where I least expected it. I tried my best to hit him, but I couldn't catch him before he disappeared again. I was losing! I need to block off his movement options. With that, I hatched a plan. I used my voice box to blast into the walls above his holes, causing rubble to fall and block his holes. Eventually, I had them all blocked up. No! You pay for this! The fight resumed, but this time on an even playing field. Now that the foe was unable to hide, he had no choice but to fight me face to face. DJ Music Man unleashed a barrage of ear-piercing shrieks. As I recoiled from the sheer volume of his screeches, he crawled in close once more, biting down onto me with his mangled teeth. I retaliated with chomps of my own. As the foe attempted to hit me with his eardrum bursting screams, I shot back with my voice box, leaving him confused. Putting some distance between us, I fired at DJ Music Man with my phaser blast. Effortlessly, I dodged his ranged attacks, jumping over his blast with ease. As the foe stopped to regain his strength, I turned and sliced through the air with my claws, sending a gun of razor-sharp wind slicing through the adversary. DJ Music Man got in close once more and we exchanged melee blows again, biting and scratching at each other with neither showing any sign of stopping. I formulated a plan to finish him and retreated to the mound of webs in the center of the room. The enemy joined me on the webbing feet, falling right into my trap. Without hesitation, I unleashed the full volume of my voice box, stunning the DJ temporarily. As the foe was incapacitated, I rapidly fired my phaser blaster, finishing him off once and for all. After he was defeated, he dropped a Fazcam. It could be used to shock the animatronics. Nice! After trying out my new Fazcam, the room began to shake violently. Ah, this place is gonna collapse! I gotta get out of here! On days 75 through 77, I was frantically looking for a way to escape, but I had blocked out all of the holes in the room. I needed to find a way out fast. The ceiling was gonna cave in in any second. Suddenly, just before the room collapsed, helping mind open one of the walls, creating a hole for me to escape out of. This way, hurry, come with me. I quickly crawled into the hole and dug our way back to the West Arcade just in the nick of time as the nets completely caved in behind me. Thanks for helping me back there. No problem. I love helping people. It's literally in my name. Wait, were you named Helpy after you discovered your love of helping people, or was it before and it was just a coincidence? Suddenly, my Roxy Talkie turned on. Looks like you got that upgrade. Now you just need to get to the sinkhole at the center of the Mega Pizza Plex. And please, try to hurry. I'm getting scared. Don't worry, Gregory. I'm gonna get you home. And so, I set up for the center of the Pizza Plex to find Gregory, leaving Helpy behind once more. But the halls were riddled with fallen debris, and my path was blocked by obstacles. Luckily, I knew just how to get past them. It's masking time. I put on the Vanny Mask. In the AR world, a clearing was made where the blocks were, and I had no problem passing through them. Once I got to the other side, I went to take off my mask, but it wouldn't come off. It was stuck. Oh no, not again. Just then, the entity appeared, 
I quickly dug behind some nearby cover to try and hide. On days 78 through 80, I was hiding while the entity searched for me. If he found me, I was a goner for sure. I know you're around here somewhere, security guard. I knew I still wasn't nearly strong enough to defeat him, so I had to tread very carefully. As he lurked through the hallways, I slowly made my way through the arcade. There's the exit. Just when I thought I was home free, the entity teleported right in front of my path. He still hadn't seen me, so I dove in between two machines just as he was turning in my direction. He stood there for a moment, and I wasn't sure if he had heard me or not. But then, he teleported away. I kept moving out of the arcade, and made it to the elevator that led back to the center of the pizza plex. I made a break for the door, but the entity teleported right in front of me. Found you! On days 81 to 82, I was being chased by the entity out of the arcade through the mega pizza plex. Every time I turned a corner, he teleported right in front of me. I had nowhere left to go. Run all you want. The AI realm is my domain. I knew I couldn't escape, but I couldn't get the mask off either. I was cornered. Just when I thought all hope was lost, Helpy dropped down from above. Leave him alone! <laughs> you annoying her! The entity slammed Helpy against the wall, hurting him fatally. Helpy, no! Luckily, Helpy's attack distracted the entity long enough for me to rip the mask off. I freed myself from the AR realm and rushed to Helpy's side. Helpy, stay with me, buddy! I don't have much time. Go to Bonnie Bowling. Animatronic there will be able to help you. Ugh. The entity will pay for this. On days 83 through 84, I arrived at Bonnie Bowl to look for the animatronic help he mentioned. Hello? Anyone here? I looked all around the bowling alley, but nobody seemed to be around. On my second trip around, I spotted something strange at the end of one of the bowling lanes. I went to investigate, and it was a secret room. I cautiously entered to discover a glam rock Bonnie waiting inside. Um, excuse me? He turned to look at me, but all he saw was my gator arm. Money, you'll pay for what you did to me. What? <laughs> On days 85 and 86, Bonnie was flying at me in a blind rage. The rabbit unleashed an electrified punch onto me, summoning lightning that struck me from above. Like the other animatronics, Bonnie's bite was extremely powerful. He sunk his teeth into my flesh, dealing massive damage. I knew I needed to get away, so utilizing my new faz cam, I stunned him, allowing me to move back and fired him from a distance by unleashing my phaser blaster and hurling my mic stand at the foe. As he moved in close once more, eager to take a bite out of me, I confused him with my voice box, stopping him in his tracks again. But even as I had the upper hand on him, the foe was driven by anger and showed no signs of backing down, charging at me with the same vigor. Despite me having far more abilities than him, his quest for revenge fueled his power, putting us on equal playing fields. We bit and clawed at each other in a never-ending exchange of blows. There was no stopping him, and pretty soon he had me on the ropes. I was about to die. Please stop! I'm not Monty! You're lying. I know those claws anywhere. No! Helpy sent me here to find you! Wait, did you say Helpy? I explained to him how I came here looking for a lost child, and how I've had to decommission some of the animatronics along the way to defend myself against the entity. That's why I've got Monty's claws! Oh, I'm sorry for attacking you. Monty and I have a past together. Nice to hear he's dead. Come with me. I followed Bonnie, and he led me all the way to a massive sinkhole under the Mega Pizza Plex. What you're looking for is down there, but be careful. I've never seen anyone come out alive. Thank you for everything, Bonnie. With that, I descended into the sinkhole, unsure of what horrors may await me inside. On days 87 through 88, I arrived inside of the sinkhole under the Mega Pizza Plex. After searching through the cavern, I discovered the remains of what appeared to be a restaurant called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. Huh, they built their new location right on top of the old one? Talk about weird, and also a bad business practice. I was hesitant to enter, but I needed to find Gregory. And so, with no other way to go, I entered Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. The establishment was in ruins and completely abandoned. It was really starting to give me the creeps. Still, I put aside my feelings and explored the restaurant high and low, searching every nook and cranny, but there were no signs of Gregory at all. I pulled out my Roxy Talkie to see if Gregory could help me out. Gregory, I'm in a sinkhole. Where are you? But Gregory didn't respond. There was nothing but static. I was completely on my own. After searching for a bit longer, I found a stage. There, Freddy, Chica, Foxy, and Bonnie, all of the original animatronics, were standing completely and eerily still on stage. Looks like they're long lost to time. It's actually somehow kind of scarier than when they're turned on. Suddenly, all of the animatronics sprung to life. Get him. 
<laughs> I was wrong. This is definitely scarier. Following Freddy's orders, Chica, Foxy, and Bonnie all ran after me ready to attack while Freddy waited on stage. On days 89 and 90, I was being attacked by three of the original animatronics from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. They were antiques that belonged in a museum, but instead, they were here trying to kill me. I was much stronger than I was in the beginning of my journey, but I was still outnumbered 3 to 1. Just like the previous animatronics I had faced in combat before, the three all had incredibly strong bites from their mechanical jaws. However, they each had their own unique powers on top of that. With his hook hand, Foxy was able to slice through the air, cutting right through me. Chica unhinged her malformed, permanently open jaw to unleash a screech that confused and disoriented me. And Bonnie, similar to the Bonnie I had fought prior, had an electrified punch was sent a jolt surging through my body as he landed each blow. Despite how much I had grown, I knew I wouldn't be able to win the battle if I remained overwhelmed by their superior numbers. I needed to cut down their ranks. First, I set my sights on Chica. Using my fast cam, I sent a bolt of electricity, striking down the chicken where she stood. Next, I focused my attacks on Foxy, knocking him back with a rapid series of bites and scratches, pinning him against the wall and tearing him into shreds until I finally managed to take him out, and turned my attention to the final remaining of the three. Bonnie. Although he was lacking eyes, the beast had no difficulty finding his mark, landing devastating electric punch after punch. Luckily, he stood no match for my own electric abilities. Unveiling my fast cam once more, I sent a powerful surge of electricity directly at Bonnie, overloading his systems and causing sparks to fly from his body. With a final, electrifying explosion, Bonnie's movement ceased, and he collapsed to the ground in a heap of twisted metal and wires. Eventually, I was able to take the three of them out, but Freddy himself still watched from on stage. Let's take Tango, big guy! With a sudden jolt, Freddy lunged forward and charged at me with surprising swiftness, seemingly undeterred by his decaying mechanical state. I braced myself, but nothing could prepare me for the onslaught of powers the bear would unleash upon me. It was like nothing I had ever seen. Drawing on the strength of his fallen comrades, Freddy possessed all the animatronics' abilities, and it was clear he would not be holding any of them back. The crackling of Bonnie's thunderous punch fueled the air with sparks of electricity. Chica's disorientingly loud screech echoed all around the restaurant, and Foxy's razor sharp claw attack from his hook had manifested itself in the bear's claws. The two of us clashed, teeth and limbs colliding, scratching, and biting in a chaotic frenzy. Sensing an opening, I hurled my mic stand at the menacing foe, sending him recoiling back and allowing me to create some distance between us. I began attacking the enemy from a distance, using the full extent of my ranged abilities. As Freddy got in close once more, hitting me with a devastating electrified punch, I was reminded of my own electric capabilities. Wielding my fast cam, I stunned him with a burst of static energy. However, he retaliated fiercely in a flurry of attacks, backing me into a corner. The bear felt like he was tougher than the other three combined, and pretty soon I was gonna lose. He dealt one massive blow, leaving me at really low health. Please, why are you doing this? He hit me one final time, and everything went black. To send a message. On days 91 to 92, I was in a black void being watched by the original four animatronics. What's going on? You're dreaming right now. We never intended to kill you. We just wanted the chance to talk to you. What is it? Gregory is in danger. William Afton is alive and resides in the sinkhole. Who's William Afton? He's a horrible man who murdered us. Our souls are trapped here. And if he gets to Gregory, his will be too. That's horrible. What can I do to help? William Afton. Kill him and save Gregory before the mega pizza plex and the horrors inside consume him. Suddenly, I woke up from the dream and all the animatronics were gone. I have no time to waste. I have to save Gregory. All of a sudden, the world shifted to AR. Oh no, the entity is coming. On days 93 and 94, I tried running, but before I knew it, the entity appeared right in front of me. You will not reach Gregory. He's mine to keep at the pizza plex. He doesn't belong to you, and I'm gonna save him. Are you sure about that? Meet the strongest of my little pawns. The world shifted back to normal, and in the entity's place was William Afton. You're not hurting Gregory! Time to gain a new victim. Like most of the animatronics, William Afton possessed the powerful bite and claw powers, and he was more than eager to unleash them upon a potential new kill to add to his roster. We exchanged blows at close range, trading bites and scratches. I thought I had seen the extent of his abilities, but I was about to pay the price for underestimating him. As I attacked Afton from a distance, he unveiled powers the likes of which I had never encountered. Fire! He lobbed 
flaming balls of ember right at me, scorching my skin and dealing massive damage. And just when I thought I had seen the last of his fire powers, he sent forward his fist engulfed in flames. While these new abilities took me by surprise, I was quickly able to regain the upper hand. But yet again, Afton would prove that counting him out was a mistake. From his rotting human interior, he formed a glob of coagulated blood from within him and hurled it right at me. Knowing I couldn't allow him to utilize that corrupt, disgusting ability any longer, I took out my phaser blaster and fired at the mechanical husk rapidly, backing him up against the wall. Enough of this. I'm going for the child. Then William Afton pushed me back and ran away. I proceeded to follow him down the pit in the floor. On days 95 and 96, I landed in a new room. But when I got there, William Afton was gone. What the? Where did he go? Suddenly, a door shut behind me. Hey, what's going on? I looked towards the window in the room and William appeared behind it. You fool. I'm going to burn you alive, just like so many others tried to do to me. Uh-oh. The room started getting hotter, and fires began appearing on the floor. I tried my best to avoid the fires, but even with my animatronic armor, I was set ablaze. Ah! Hot! Hot! I jumped up on top of some rubble to avoid the flames, but it was still getting hotter. This is bad. I'm gonna get cooked alive! Just then, I noticed a computer in the room. Wait! My faz wrench! I used the wrench on the computer, and the doors unlocked. Yes! No! You're not getting out of here alive! I tried to leave, but Afton was standing between me and the exit, and he lunged at me with intent to kill. On days 97 and 98, I continued to fight Afton, during which the room continued to heat up fast. The two of us clashed once more, charging at each other with full force. This time, Afton didn't hold back, unleashing his burst of congealed immediately. Disgusted and eager to put an end to this vile ability, I took out my faz cam and unleashed a mighty surge of electricity down onto him, stunning him temporarily and ceasing his attacks. As the enemy drew close once more, I switched my faz cam for my phaser blaster and rapidly pulled the trigger, unleashing a flurry of beams of energy that kept him at bay. The fight couldn't go on much longer. Although Afton was more resistant to fire than me, the flames were engulfing us both, and it was clear our bodies couldn't withstand this heat forever. So I ran to the other side of the room, casting my mic stands directly at Afton in an attempt to slow him down. But it was in vain. Afton was still right on my tail and hurling blood at me from behind. Using my voice box, I sent forth a wave of sound that confused him temporarily and seized the opportunity to sprint through the fire to the opposite wall. Despite my best efforts, I just couldn't beat Afton. The fight was dragging on longer and longer, and I was running out of time. This isn't working. I need to try something else. I decided to make a run for it instead. I ran through the exit, and once I got through the door, I slammed it shut and threw some blocks down, blocking the way out. That should do it. I was barely able to escape, and managed to lock Afton in the room. No! After defeating Afton, I escaped, running out into the main room. Suddenly, my Roxy talkie turned on, and I heard a familiar voice. Max, are you there? Gregory, I'm here. Where are you? They sealed me into the wall with stone. Just break it down and you'll be able to save me. Suddenly, the world shifted into AR and the entity appeared right behind me, blocking my path to Gregory. You have to get through me first. On day 99, I was fighting my toughest foe yet, the entity. Why are you doing this? You don't understand what you're getting yourself into. Leave the boy here. Never. I'm saving Gregory even if it kills me. Levitating above the ground, the virtual rabbit lunged towards me. But my reflexes were quick. With great speed, I was able to use my fast cam to stun him. I broke away and attempted to fire my phaser blaster at him. But my attack was cut short as the foe unleashed a crack of lightning down onto me. That was only scratching the surface of his abilities. As he hurled a burst of blue flames towards me, I retaliated by shooting my phaser blaster once more. Taking a step back, the entity released a massive beam of purple laser so strong that it reduced the room around us to rubble. Just as I was gathering my bearings amidst the now destroyed room, the foe teleported us to a different one, the entrance of the pizza plex. I attempted to reorient myself, but the entity granted me no respite, immediately scorching me with his flames and lightning. I attempted to disorient him, but it was to no avail. Relentless, the enemy flew in close and hit me with his melee attacks that sent me flying back. Once more, he unleashed a multitude of his powerful laser attacks, caving the ground around us. And again, we were teleported elsewhere, this time to DJ Music Man's lair in the West Arcade. I attempted to confuse him, but the foe was unstoppable, chasing after me and letting out his massive laser once more, destroying the building. No matter how much I ran, he remained on my tail and teleported us again. In an instant, I found myself fighting him in Roxy Raceway. 
Having had enough of this game of cat and mouse, the entity didn't hesitate to use his high-powered beam to completely devastate the area. I dashed away from him as best as I could, maneuvering through the holes he created to the other side of the raceway. As determined as ever, the foe continued firing his laser at me as I ran, sending gravel cascading down around us. We eventually teleported back to where the fight started. I can't beat him! Suddenly, the Roxy Talkie came on again. Max! The entity resides in the AR world! If you can turn off the security protocol, he'll die with it! How do I do that? You have to use the computer! Hurry, Max! I rushed to the computer as fast as I could, avoiding attacks from the entity as I ran. Get back here! On day 100, I got to the computer and used the Faz wrench, shutting down the security protocol and killing the entity. No! Finally, the world turned back to normal. Gregory, hold on! I'm coming! I rushed to the wall, breaking it open. But as the final block broke, I realized it wasn't Gregory waiting, but something else. Who are you? Thanks for freeing me, Max. Now that you've served your purpose, I can destroy this world. I had been tricked. I accidentally released a new horror into this world. I ran to a nearby elevator as quickly as I could, avoiding the mimic. Once I was inside and the doors closed, I felt the elevator suddenly begin to shake. The floor gave out and I plummeted into the darkness below.